I got to start with Mr. Sandberg in uh, the game where, you know, he hit the two home runs off of Bruce Suter. I always uh, tell him to the fact that if it wasn't for me, he wouldn't have got a chance to face him twice. <laughs> because uh, when he was running the credits there, I think Willie McGee hit a double off me and he was the player of the game. And uh, Rhino comes up with like two outs, whack, another home run. So I went from uh, blown save to a loss. To win it. <laughs> to the win, win, win it. Pitch all in the same <laughs> game, man. That's what we, we were talking earlier about the guys going that many innings, but that was probably one of the, one of the uh, uh, key performances I, I think I've been, that I saw in a game of the guy hitting the top. Steve the top Trout pitch. takes some credit there because he started off, he started the game and was down seven to nothing yeah. after three innings. <laughs> so he, he kind of set yeah. that day up. Yeah, so Rhino had to come in. The rainbow. Oh, yeah. But that was that was that game right there with with, uh, with Rhino was definitely definitely the the best I've, I think I've seen because Bruce Suter was on the best of his game right now. I mean he was not I mean many guys didn't get like two hits in a week off of Bruce Suter with the stuff that he had because he was nasty and to see Rhino do that and I do appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> you know for me for me I think it was watching Andre's MVP year in '87 came over there and um, hit 49 home runs. Uh, which at the time was just ridiculous. I mean, it seemed like you were hitting one like every other day, and it was 49, but 49 was a big number then. And, uh, and to watch that season and, uh, and to watch you do your thing uh, in, in the outfield, and uh, we covered that side pretty well uh, on the fly balls. Hawk, I'm coming out unless I hear something, uh, then it's all yours. Uh, so... Uh, you know, the right field and second base, we had to get together on, on the fly balls at Wrigley Field and, and the sun balls. But, um, yeah, for me, it was the year that Andre had. And, and watching that all year long, uh, an MVP uh, teammate, uh, really incredible. And it got to the point where he was just so hot the whole year. I'd, I'd watch his batting practice when, when I wasn't hitting. We hit in the same group, but if, when it was, wasn't my turn to hit, I'd go behind the cage and just see the view that he had with the ball coming in and just seeing it being crushed to all fields. And then I'd get in there and try and do the same thing. Uh, you know, I, I, he was like my uh, built-in video or, or hitting coach. Uh, and, and back then, you didn't rely so much on the hitting coaches they do today. It was more about the teammates. And uh, mm -hmm. I'd stand back there and watch that ball come in there and see where, the middle away, boom, right center, left center, inside, reacting to it. and. And then uh, I'd try and do the same thing, try and emulate that. That was an awesome year. I, I don't know if you remember. Yeah, of course it doesn't happen today because if you go on the disabled list, two weeks, three weeks, you get sent out for minor league rehab. Well, I recall you injuring your ankle. And I think you missed all of probably a month. I missed 20 days, actually. 20, yeah, 20 days, days, 20 yeah, days. About three weeks. And you were activated, and you came back, and your first at bat, you went deep. Against the Dodgers. And I was like, no, this game isn't that easy. <laughs> <laughs> that always stood out to me, to really see someone come back. You know, you take your BP, yeah, that's different. You know, you're talking about game speed, not mm -hmm. that you, that's another monster altogether. But... Uh, to miss all of that time and then to step right in and not miss a beat. Uh, that's my most fun remember of you. I guess well, for me. Go ahead, oh, go ahead Wes. I, I guess for you. me is uh, not only one game, but there were several games to hit third in front of uh, Ernie Banks. So many years that I saw him hit the ball out the ballpark. He'd get knocked down. He'd get back up and they throw him a slide piece over home plate and he hit the ball out the ballpark. But I think one of the most exciting times is when we play in Atlanta Braves and he tried so many years to hit that 500 home run and uh, Pat Jarvis was the pitcher and I think it was the fourth or fifth time up at the plate and Ernie hit his 500 home run and the excitement of the crowd, the excitement of the people, the excitement of his teammates to watch him run around the base. And not only that one game to hit the 500, but the time that coming up to the 500 
because he was such a great hitter. And I often wonder, Ernie was hitting 35 and 40 home runs a year, and they didn't have anybody else hitting that many home runs. Right. And how they give him that many home runs? You know, you, you, somewhere you got to pitch around him, don't you? But that was the kind of hitter he was. You know, they throw the ball outside, and he'll reach out and hit the ball over left field fence. He was such a great hitter. His timing was perfect. You know, if you see Ernie in practice, if you see in a game, he had the same swing. It wasn't an aggressive swing. It was a swing just nice and easy, and the ball went out the ballpark. It was a joy to play for him, and it was good for me when I won the rookie of the year in 1961. You know, Ernie was still hitting home runs, and they said, well, I'm going I'm to pitch to Billy. You know, I don't want to face Ernie. I'm going to get him out, you know, and uh, go around him. So uh, it was a joy for me. I got a lot of fastballs right down the middle <laughs> plate with Ernie hitting there, and uh, I didn't waste them. I hit him out the ballpark. But it was, it was just a joy playing for the most positive guy that you ever known. Uh, you wake up in the morning, he's the same guy. Bob Gibson and all those guys say, is this guy like that all the time? I say, he's like that every day, every morning. He have a lot of fun playing the game of baseball. And that's why he had some great years. I don't know about, I don't know about that let's play two thing. I, I, I enjoyed playing one <laughs> game and getting on out of there. But it's a story, innings. it was a story behind that plate too. You yeah. know, we're playing in uh, Houston, Houston, Houston at the before time. the Astrodome. Yep. And uh, Ernie, well, Lou Brock went out and went, hit three trip, two triples. And he going around the base pad, and he come in the club, he come on the bench and say, I can't go no more. So Ernie, let's play two, let's play two, the whole, t the whole season. And he go down there, and he played the first game, and he went down the second game. And the guys was on the Houston Astros, uh, let's play two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that was the first time I saw him. He, he didn't have a lot of fun after, after that happened. So yeah. you, you had to pick your poise in between. Oh, yeah. Between nah, yeah, yeah. Nice and easy and sweet swinging. Huh? Yeah, we were, playing, we, were playing, yeah. we were playing on the outside at the time, you know. We wasn't playing in the Astrodome. We were playing outside. It's 110. You had, to, you had to come outside. You know, you take a shower inside, and you had to come outside to put your shirt on. There was no air conditioning there. It was so hot down there. When they got the Astrodome, it was cool, but it was hard to see, see a baseball down there. Well, I have two situations. Billy Williams Day. Billy went seven for eight, and I beat the Cardinals and Bob Gibson. We hit a home run against him. And the other situation was opening day. I beat Gibson two to one, and you had a home run in, in the ninth inning. Oh, that to was To win great. a ball game. <laughs> so I look back. Uh, if it wasn't for teammates, pitchers can't win. Uh -huh. And in that situation, especially Billy Williams' day, when you went seven for eight, uh, I mean, you were hot that day. I think the ball, the, the out that you made was a line drive. <laughs> but the you, most you could exciting, see the ball. Yeah, I mean, the most exciting thing to me, it was 11th or 12th inning, and you and Gibson were still, still on the mound still pitching. Still out there pitching, yeah. Yeah, You're right. You were still out there pitching. Back then, I mean, that's what, if the starting pitcher was still in control of the ball game, I think Red Chaney's was the manager with mm -hmm. the Cardinals, and we had Leo. Mm -hmm. If you were in control of the game, you stayed out there. Yeah. You kept pitching. Yeah. And in my situation, Billy Williams. Well, Sweet Spill and <laughs> Billy Williams hit that home run. Whenever you got a win. Whenever you and Bob Gibson pitch, I could plan something for that day. <laughs> because I think you guys pitched a game that was hour two 50. hours, hour 50 something, minutes. Yeah, hour 50 minutes. And I could, time. I could plan a fishing trip. Hour <laughs> I could go out and, it's not dark at the time, you know. Smitty, you wouldn't have got much of a nap that day. Oh, <laughs> man, jeez. Uh, you got a 20-minute nap and you had to get I out there. I sleep doing yeah. BP. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. But, you know, you, you want to talk about, like, teammates. And, and most of the guys, like, as pitchers, you know, would think of, you know, another pitcher as a teammate that, that taught you a whole lot. But for me on that, that 84 club, going back a little bit, Garrett Matthews was like the one so guy yeah. that, that taught me so much about, you know, uh, like, like when a guy's looking for a key situation and things like that. And he would tell you about, you know what, man, we don't need to win 10 in a row. I'm like, why not? He was like, because if you go and lose eight in a row, you're going to be back where you were or whatever. And he was like, what you do is you win series. 
You mm -hmm. win three out of four. You win yeah. two out of three, and that's at the end. That's what, that's the one thing that sticks in my mind about Sarge. You know, and and it, it was so so great to see the the uh, the camaraderie he had with his teammates and stuff like that. And I, I just love to see Rhino get on him all the time. And it was like always Rhino would go out and put the little explosive thing in his cigarette, and like two innings later, he's trying to teach. Talking to Rhino about how to hit and how to set up hit pitchers and things like that, man. So <laughs> that was the one thing that I really enjoyed mm -hmm. about that. But Garrett Matthews was like the, the the key guy for me on that on that ball club. You know, when you when you talk about that Lee, it, it reminds me of uh, Maddox when he was pitching for the Atlanta Braves. And every time I used to look at a game, and he would sit by Clance Jones. Mm -hmm. And I think when you talk about a hitter, you know telling you this guy looking for that pitch yeah this guy is yes. looking for that pitch and every time every time i watched the game and maddox he was set right by clance jones and i see the discussion that they had yes and uh, that was what that was all about you know in this situation what's this guy looking for what this guy looking for and uh it, it happens you know it happens all the time yeah i think we could all agree on this to go into the hall of fame you had to be surrounded by good teammates, mm -hmm. and uh, and because that that's how that's how I learn. I learned from teammates. I, mm -hmm. I learned from Andre. I learned from Sarge when he came over. Uh, Penguin when he came over. As far mm -hmm. as pitching and defense, Sutcliffe uh, was big. So uh, we can all say we had great teammates. Uh, yes. We had fun together. A close knit group, and uh, and for me, my memories of playing was was all about the teammates yes. that I had, and and Big Lee. Uh, was a tremendous teammate, and uh, and Andre as well. Played with Fergie, played some hot corner behind Fergie, yeah. throwing inside change-ups to right-handed hitters. <laughs> He'd give me a little heads up. <laughs> right, yeah. Rhino, heads Rhino, up. be ready. Inside change-up to a right-handed hitter. He's looking for a, a foul ball. <laughs> yeah. to, if he kept it fair, he wanted to give me a heads up. But uh, great yeah, teammates. Yeah. He, he used uh, to move me in. He used to move me in left field, too. He'd turn around. Yeah. <laughs> he could do that because he had the control. You know, yeah, Fergie yeah. could throw the ball where he wanted to. They had such great control. Yeah, you're, you're right, Rhino. I think the relationships, people always ask the question, do you miss the game? And you don't miss the game. You don't miss playing the game. You put your time in. But it's the relationships yep. that you incur, I think, over a period of time that, you know, you get that individual that you just happen to click with and they're in your life forever. Yes. That's what you miss the most. You, 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 that, that gets a little bigger, but hey, it is what it is. It's, it's you know, it's the <laughs> you nature. You guys probably don't remember, Yoshi Kawano used to hand us our pay envelopes. Yes. Now it's all direct deposit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you went around the whole team, yeah. sex in his back pocket. Hey, yeah. So, and the, the first team would show up and, hey, uh, yo, you got my envelope there? Oh, yeah, we got the hey, But you got your dues on there, too. <laughs> uh, you got a little note. What you want. Yeah, 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 that's awesome, man. Yeah. Three dollars for the sanitary it. side. Oh, yeah. Yoshi <laughs> Kawana. Oh, God. Uh, Captain him, I broke the mold. That was the fun part of playing. Oh, yes. Little things. Yeah.